spoke to Badly Drawn Boy, he said when he met his idol, Bruce Springsteen, he apologized for buying the bootlegs. Because he said, you know, he felt like he let him down. And I don't know how you guys, if you're totally forgiving, but, um, well, I had a friend steal a towel from your hotel uh, <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, I'm not offering to return it, by the way. That is the hotel from the Clarence. So, uh, Edge does housekeeping. He does the housekeeping. <laughs> a little more bleach next I time. I remember that towel. This is yours. <laughs> and it's now gone. Um, I, want, I want to bring it down to a different level. Uh, you mentioned Joey Ramone on stage, and when Joey Ramone passed away, there was so much. Uh, he, he made the covers of the papers, and the stories were delivered about the life, and people started to eulogize with him. And by the way, I really wished that the uh, person who delivered the eulogy started it with one, two, three, four, but they didn't. So it was a little <laughs> sad. But you know that he was listening to your album, and you know the, the song has been reported that he passed away to, and it made me think of, of Heroes, and how you don't have that many, really, anymore. And when you hear something like Joey Ramone in that context, how do you feel? Well, actually, I do have a lot, a lot of heroes, and, and, but Joey Ramone, what was extraordinary about him is he's more of an anti-hero, really, you know? And the thing that I was telling you about punk rock, and that it's a spirit more than it is anything else. Once it becomes a uniform or, you know, a, a set of records, it's not as interesting. But what Joey Ramone did for us was, he told us when we were 15 and 16 uh, that you, you know, you could you could be in a rock and roll band and be, and, and 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 take it all away because that's what that's what the Ramones meant to us. And in fact, <clears throat> I don't know uh, uh, if if you know this, but. Um, you know, you, you showed some clippings of us early on when we were kids, but way before that, when we were still at school, um, we were trying to get on a local TV show, and a big shop producer was coming down to see us in our rehearsal room, and we were fighting and kicking the shit out of each other, trying to end songs, trying to start songs, what was in the middle. We couldn't agree on anything. So when he came through the door, we couldn't, we couldn't agree on playing two of our own songs. So we played him two Ramon songs, back to back, and he said, did you really write those yourself? <laughs> and we said, yeah, yeah. And he put us on the TV show. And we played our own songs on the TV show. But I got to say thank you to Joey Ramone for, you know, for getting us started. And that was cool. Their entire career based on a scam. This interview's over. <laughs> it is so done. Uh, heroes, Edge, uh, people who... Um, who have got to you in a way that you wouldn't normally get, not the heroes on television, somebody who's touched you and will still touch you today? Um, John Hume, who's a politician in Northern Ireland, who's spent his entire career uh, fighting for a, a peaceful solution in the North. He, he represents the nationalist community, but uh, as opposed to violence his whole, his whole career, has been the uh, victim of many attempts to assassinate him, and he's just... Uh, just one of those people who you you just can't imagine, you know, the amount of uh, determination that it must have taken to go through all those years and and still hold to that principle. So he's, he's a hero of mine. Reading the book Before the Dawn, the Jerry Adams story a while back, um, you've talked about shaking his hand, trying to get a sense of of the, of the story outside of what I get on television. Um, the impact of shaking his hand after drawing that line in the sand. You know, you've got the Republican, the different kind. You've got the Unionist. You know, what does that mean to you at this point? Because you almost get the sense that it's sort of lost. The real story is sort of lost on all that. Well, in, in Ireland, uh, they said the solution to the troubles in Ireland was, you know, 100,000 rock bands. Because, you know, up in, in the north, it was the music that brought everyone together. And it was the music that, that kind of... Uh, showed people a different way and but with regards letting go of old um, and pr you know uh, old kind of convictions and and I, I thought I had the most open mind you know I thought I, you know, but but I was always really angry when a bomb would go off in Liverpool or a bomb would go off somewhere and 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 I I just I just I, I just can't really cope with the idea that an idea can be worth more than a human life. And so for me to meet people who are responsible for that kind of, those kind of atrocities is very difficult for me. But I have to understand that this is the time in Ireland to think for the future, 
and leave the past behind. And a lot of people, including Jerry Adams, have made great compromises to make a peace in Ireland. And a lot of people on the unionist side have made a lot of compromises. And we've made no compromises. We're living in the South. We have it great. And we should sometimes just shut up. But that's hard for me. <laughs> you draw those lines. You, make, you have those convictions. And then you realize you have to. At a certain point, if you don't change, then you're just blown off at the mouth, and you're not going to make anything better. Is it difficult for, for, for you, for example, to have a line in the sand and think five years later, oh, it's not so scary on that side. Perhaps I can do this. No. <laughs> <laughs> we know who makes all the business deals in the band, man. <laughs> Lines in the sand. I, I don't know about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we pick up the ball here? That's a pretty egalitarian way to go through life. It works. Are you making reference to one, one particular thing or well, any? Because situation? you're a band that's been associated with with things more than music. You've been you've been associated with things that are happening in a real world. That you, you know, the moment you stand up for something, whatever it may be. Years later, you could think, "E, the more I learn about this." We were younger, that doesn't, you know, Bob Dylan in my back pages, I was so much older then, and I'm younger than that now. Have you had a lot of those realizations? I think, you know, com compromise is, uh, is probably, for me, is the hardest thing to swallow, but there's, there's no doubt that it's the only, um, it's the only way forward, and that goes with everything. But I think, you know, if you have um, strong feelings about things, you've got to stand by them. We've, we've gone into countries and challenge politicians, we've taken hits for that. And, you know, that's part of the job of, uh, of rock and roll. I mean, it, it's, it's to challenge, um, you know, those things that other people maybe hold sacred. And um, it, it's hard sometimes because, you know, people are always going to say, well, why don't you just make music and, and, you know, just saying get back in your box. But the greatest rock and roll music that was made always had some kind of political message, no matter what that was. There was always some kind of rebellion there. It's like, is it, you know, if pop music, if the idea that seems to be around pop music is, look, everything's okay, chill out, relax, you know, it's not so bad, don't rock the boat. Rock music was always a different thing for us. Rock, rock music was always about ch changing the world, believing that you could change the world. Do you, at least the world inside your head or the world inside the, your bedroom, you know, but it just wasn't just laying back and taking it. And, uh, you know, that seems to me and the people that have inspired us like Bob Marley and the Wailers or, you know, whether The Clash or something like that, they were always sticking their noses in, in other people's business. It starts in your head, it usually ends up in your middle finger, then you learn more about the story. And, That's right. and you carry it on. That's exactly right. Do you feel that bands today are shirking the responsibility? They have more sense. They have more <laughs> sense than to take it on. I mean, it's like, you know, who, is that regret? I, I just sometimes would, I would prefer that we were just a pop group. I mean, uh, I just can't get over that Destiny's Child record. I'm thinking, <laughs> it's so good. I want to be in an R&B band and get those dance moves down. And just, <laughs> You know. June 7th, in this very environment, Destiny's Child come in as well for a big time event, so it should be Do fun. they sit on these seats? Um, <laughs> we'll ask them for you. <laughs> we've got some people at the window who, uh, we've got them to, a little message for you, and we're gonna walk over there if you want. Can you take a walk? So this window here, on one side. Please say hello to you too. Say my name, say my name. You know the rest of the song? <laughs> oh, you too, however much. At a certain point, does this ever become weird to you? Can you become accustomed to this? I don't know if I'd want to come accustomed to it, you know? I thought I'd enjoy the moment. It doesn't happen everywhere. But now it's cool, you know? It's really cool to you know? it's, uh, Okay, so everybody here, now, you do have a special message from the, uh, for the guys in you too, right? So on the count of three, one, two, three. I love the sweetest thing. And now the next one, one, two, three. Sunday, sunny, Sunday. And one more. George.
George. This is someone I've always wanted to meet. <laughs> Yourself? Mephisto. Mephisto. <laughs> As Bono goes in the crowd. I just have something to say to you. One day, all of this could be yours. <laughs> you too does much. Stick around more after this. Thank you.